stocks are on the floor and then all of a sudden they explode and there's a 3x, 5x, 10x type of return in a very short period of time. I would say hello uh, and uh, a warm welcome uh, to our Gold Invest series of interviews with first-hand experts from the mining and junior uh, exploration space. And today uh, we have a most special guest, uh, Rob McHune. Uh, thank you for taking the time today uh, to having a brief discussion with us. And I'm looking forward to um, you know, exchanging thoughts with you. Thank you for um, the invitation. Thank you. Um, so, I know you are a household name in the industry, but and and yes, you you were the founder of Gold Corp, and you are the founder of McEwen Mining. But would you mind giving our listeners just a very very brief high level intro on on your on your and who you are, what your background is, and, and, and what your kind of approach to the mining game is? Well, I'll go back a bit. Um, <laughs> my, my father was in the investment industry and at, uh, he had me at age 10 and 11 charting stocks and investing. I started investing at 12. Um, <clears throat> I followed him into the investment industry and worked. Uh, he had a brokerage firm and then I worked with Merrill Lynch um, did an undergraduate in economics and then an MBA, um, was in sales research, corporate finance, and always focused on the natural resource sector, particularly gold. So I was buying gold bullion, gold mining shares around the world. And at one point <clears throat> after meeting a number of, I'll call them promoters that made discoveries, I thought I'd like to try my hand at jumping in and seeing if I could get into the jet stream that some of these individuals had gotten into. And I jumped into a hostile takeover battle as a white knight, <clears throat> bought control of two mining companies. And over a course of eight years, did three corporate restructurings to create Gold Corp, um, putting five companies together. One of them that I managed was a closed end investment fund that was selling at a 50% discount to its net asset value. And gold stocks at the time were trading between two and three times net asset value. And I thought if I could take a cash rich closed end fund that invested in gold bullion and gold shares and merge it with mining company, I could get a four to six X return for my shareholders. We did much better than that. We went from about 30 cents to $40, but <clears throat> and from 50 million to 8 billion. Um, and then I decided, uh, Well, corporate governance was, I think, I think it's well intended, but it's poorly managed. And mm. the board, I felt, was getting more um, preoccupied with covering covering their derriere than uh, looking to grow. And I said, it's time for me to leave. Um, before I left, I bought another company and merged it with Gold Corp. So when I left, we had over 400 million in cash. We had no debt. And we were one of the lowest cost gold producers in the world. And I thought that's a good basis to leave a company and let it grow from there. Um, while at Gold Corp though, I used to invest in a lot of juniors and I viewed that as a farm team. Um, so I could see what, I could monitor what was happening in the exploration space. And uh, after I left Gold Corp, I continued to do that. And I, to this day, I still invest between I like buying at the bottoms of markets and buy 10 to uh, 30% of junior companies, uh, believing they're going to go higher. Well, that's that's that leads us to the next question really here. Um, obviously, we are very much, uh, you know, engaged with junior mining since over 20 years uh, as Gold Invest. And so I, I'd like to ask you the question, have you ever seen times that were that bad for, for junior mining companies to to actually access fresh money 
Have you seen times where it was that bad as it is today? Uh, there have been several periods similar to this where there was just no market. Um, most recently, it was 2015. It was the bottom of the metal cycle uh, right after 2000 when gold started falling out of the sky. Um, back in 1988 as well. Um, yep. So these to me are the opportune times to be entering the market when no one cares for the sector. There are some market capitalizations have, are, is dra are dragging along the floor and no one wants to buy and you can get good positions at this time. Well, but, I mean, but we don't you think some of that the juniors having having like three million in cash and a, and a one and a half million market cap? So <laughs> you do wonder, um, <clears throat> can it get any worse? I no, don't. But, okay, go I ahead. don't think so. Not not materially. I mean, you you might not get the absolute bottom, but you're pretty close, and I think the upside's quite promising. That isn't the problem. A little bit more, kind of. Uh, structural of structure of a structural problem. There's market caps that are prohibitive of companies actually raising significant amounts of money without giving their companies away. So they're sitting there at the five cent level or even worse, two cent level, not able to access money. And not only that, from a structural point of view, but also it seems to me the broker system has broken in in the, in canada could you could you speak to that a little bit well one it is difficult or at least the industry is saying it's difficult to raise capital um, and a lot of the brokers had large um, metal trading departments and research departments and that that's not paying the bills right now so they've reduced the number of people covering them um, I do believe, um, I mean, I have something, a company called McEwen Mining, and we have a subsidiary called uh, McEwen Copper. And I just bring it up because in the last four, 15 months, we've been able to raise four, just under 400 million US privately for uh, this copper project. Um, so I don't think there's a shortage of money per se, it's a shortage of money in particular pockets that were the traditional pockets. When we, uh, the money we got for the copper project came from Rio Tinto that liked the copper project and from Stellantis, the fourth largest car manufacturer in the world, because they're looking at copper and they're also looking at the way we are approaching designing the mine where we're looking at uh, very low carbon output um, using a, a quarter of the water emitting a tenth of the carbon um, and producing a green cathode rather than concentrate and i just look and say well, i think the industry could find money if the industry starts moving a little bit off center from where they are and there's um, according to morningstar um, which is a monitoring service of funds under management in the u.s at the end of 2022, there was over $2.5 trillion, not billion, trillion dollars invested in impact investment funds and ESG funds. And so I believe if the industry shifts its practices and starts catering to some of the, the trends that are out there, you could attract capital and possibly capital at a lower rate than they pay today for in terms of dilution and others. I also believe when stocks are trading or, you know, in pennies, um, we, we need to see consolidation right now in the industry, uh, two, three companies coming together at a time because they do not have the market capitalization to appeal to an institutional investor and nor do they have the liquidity to afford, uh, investors, the comfort that well, if they've run up and I want to take a profit, I can get out of the stock without pushing it back down. Um, 
Yeah. And, uh, and Rob, just coming back to your question earlier, uh, you asked uh, what about mining in, in Germany or in Europe? Um, you just mentioned the analyst. And, and if I uh, check with my local bank, they told me out of the 40,000 securities available worldwide, because of higher regulations, MIFID 2 and so on in Europe, they're only covering about 800 companies max. So about 2%. Now, if you ask them, okay, what do you cover then in the commodity space? They will say, well, Rio Tinto, BHP, Anglo-American and Fortescue, and that's it. Four companies. So if you want to invest in the commodity space, so we're not even talking about juniors in general. Um, there's just no stage for this kind of investment at this moment with banks kind of cutting back on, on the analyst side and only covering about 2% of the securities available on average. Yes. Unfortunately, we're in a period where, uh, you know, we're, the mining industry is cyclical and unfortunately mining stocks, most of them haven't been a buy and hold type of situation. Yeah. You have to watch, the, recognize there is a cycle and there are times to be buyer, to be a buyer and a time to be a seller. Um, I know when I was building Gold Corp, we were lucky that we just found a really rich ore body in a place that no one thought it was. and it, kept growing in size. Um, but there were periods where the stock went up and down um, before reaching its ultimate highs. So you have to have okay. some faith. And and you, this isn't probably widows and orphans area of investment in the speculative stocks. It's um, You have to look at it with an eye that it's volatile, that there could be explosive movements in the share price up and down so um, don't wait until the end. You want to take a profit every once in a while. Well, um, you know, the, the, you just mentioned alternative sources of funding. Um, to me, it's obvious that mining is key for, let's say, the green transition. Uh, and so it should require more funding than, rather than less. To me, really, the question is, what other alternative sources of funding do you see? Is it Saudi Arabia? Will uh, uh, chefs like Bill Gates step in eventually? Or is it just, do they have too much to lose because it's regarded as, you know, the, the, the filthy part, the, the environment, environmentally not so sustainable part of, 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 of the economy? If you look at the energy transition, that's taking place in the world. It needs a lot of metals to achieve the goals. And, yep. and there's not enough material on service to be recycled to satisfy those needs. So that means more mines. Uh, investments in the mining sector is probably about less, well, probably about 1% of the total market capitalization, uh, the markets. So it's very, very under owned right now. And yet it's very essential to modern civilization. If we stop mining, we're going back into the dark ages because uh, our modern civilization is based on the metals we pull out of the ground, large, largely, um, and the way we live. Um, I think you'll see more. I mean, I've always been very associated with the precious metal space. And so I, I look at the enormous amount of monetary stimulation that's taken place and the amount of debt that's piled up in, by governments, by corporations, by consumers, when interest rates were very low. But interest rates are not going to stay low, and it's going to be very expensive to have that, and people are going to start shifting and looking at precious metal space. I think um, they'll much, look much closer and want to be participating in it, and you could say, well, maybe people will start following the lead of the central banks because they've been big buyers of gold and they're buying the gold with their fiat currencies, their euros, their dollars, and their wands. And they're just saying, hey, I don't want a piece of paper sitting in my bank vault. I want a piece of gold or I want some silver. Um, and, or maybe I want to buy some grains. I want to buy something I can eat or something that I can trade. And that day is coming. It, it's, uh, <laughs> It's right in front of us and no one's paying any attention to it. Well, you, you, you stated that uh, in, in 
a recent interview that I listened to, you, you, you basically said, we're in for rough times, okay? Uh, and we should get prepared. That's always been the tout for gold. Uh, but taking it back to in investing or speculating in junior mining stocks, how does that kind of fit together? Being trying to secure and uh, use gold as a uh, as a kind of a safe haven, and then on the other hand, doing the ultimate speculation by getting involved at a very early stage uh, in, in in junior mining companies. Um, maybe you can answer that. Well, I, I'm not in a position to give advice to anyone about where they should invest. I think it all depends on their risk tolerance and 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 the size of their treasury or bank account. Um, for me, uh, I invest in gold bullion. I invest in juniors. Um, and I'd say I'm very heavily skewed towards gold. But let's say I have a large amount of gold bullion tucked in a vault. And then I like the juniors because I think of gold as being the ultimate form of money and yes. and the juniors uh, I have um, I guess I've experienced some very good returns in that space buying when no one wants them I've also experienced some ones that just disappear <laughs> so it, it, it's an area where it's not it, it's fraught with a lot of danger so you I found the best way to eliminate that danger is to buy when no one wants them because the prices are quite low. And I mean, you look at, if you go back to 2015, it, stocks are on the floor and then all of a sudden they explode and there's a 3x, 5x, 10x type of return in a very short period of time. Um, I look at the world today and not only is our monetary system a problem and our banking system is in peril, but we have geopolitical issues going on around the world that in themselves could create um, large movements to hard assets. Um, so yeah. it, it, when the gold starts moving, the seniors will move the intermediates and then the juniors start running because the seniors have cut out their exploration They're looking for new stories, as are the intermediates. Um, and people have forgotten about the juniors. And all of a sudden, there's a resource there that no one paid any attention to. And I'm I'm seeing press releases coming out and drill holes and good grade, long intercepts. And I'm going, nothing's happening. How come? Yeah, yeah. Which leads me to asking you two specific questions, if you don't mind, uh, about two companies that we are covering. Uh, on gold invest. Uh, one is Goliath Resources uh, and the other one is Dynasty Gold. You're on record to owning both. And I, if you if you're okay, I'd like to just have a brief commentary with no recommendation implied, but just what intrigued you about Goliath and then maybe about uh, Dynasty. Well, Goliath is exploring the property that attracted me was there one in the Golden Triangle, an area in, in British Columbia. And it's in an area where um, the, the glaciers are retreating and they're seeing under the glaciers a lot of mineralization. And it's in a part of the world that has a number of large deposits to start with. So they were pulling some high grade hits over reasonable intercept lengths. And I have to say, um, I'm always attracted to high grade. It's just, um, it covers a lot of errors that can happen when you're trying to develop a mine. Um, so you're in a prolific area. Uh, it's new because of the retreat of the glaciers um, and, and it's the timing. So I, I bought in for that reason. and I, My um, preference for high grade comes from my days at Gold Corp, where we had a very rich ore body that we found a mile below surface and no one was paying any attention to it uh, at yeah. the time. May, may I add to uh, Go, uh, Goliath of resources, of, obviously, that it is one of the most active juniors and it had uh, <clears throat> better access to funding than, than I think 
most stocks uh, out there in Canada, most junior stocks, leading me to, to Dynasty Gold. That's an even earlier stage. And, and uh, I was honestly surprised to see your name uh, popping up when when it came to funding. And, and I think it's fair to say uh, without your backing, uh, the company would not be where it is today. So what 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 uh, did you what do you see in a, in a in a junior mining company like Dynasty specifically? It's located in a geological belt that's similar to where the Red Lake mine of Gold Corp located, just okay. a little bit further west. Uh, there has been some exploration there in the past. There are a number of properties in the area that. Um, have had, had reasonable resources developed, multi-million ounce. Uh, they had a drill program. The first 10 holes hit mineralization, all of them, which is notable. Very often uh, someone says, we're gonna drill over there, they drill, there's nothing. Um, when they drill over there, there's nothing again. So first it was the, um, the occurrence of good grades, some very long intercepts too. Um, low grade, but there was high grade in there as well. And then it's close to a highway, so you have infrastructure. The Ontario government's looking at putting a high voltage power line through the area. So it, thinking about development down the road, um, it's only, they've only drilled in a small portion of their property, yeah. probably about 5% of it. So I'm thinking there's more room to expand and see if they have more occurrence of gold. And then they have three and a half million dollars in their treasury and they have a market cap of 14 million. Um, so they they don't need to raise capital right now. They can conduct their drill program for next year. They have holes pending and hopefully they'll hit more of what they've been finding. But um, I just thought it was um, an opportune time to step into a story in an area that's known for gold, uh, that's quite inexpensive today. Well, that, that's that's answering the question without giving too much uh, of a of an investment advice. Um, I think, uh, uh, Arne, do you have uh, another question uh, for for Rob? Or yeah. So regarding uh, the the TSX, um, I mean. I've heard from quite a few other investors over this year that um, the quality of companies that also now uh, in the junior space are listed on the TSX um, could be better, that there is a lot of room for improvements in terms of governance. You already mentioned that probably there should be a merger, an acquisition phase. Um, do you see the TSX also in a critical phase compared to the ASX in Australia, for example, that seems to have higher standards on average? Uh, in terms of the companies listed in the junior mining space? I think juniors are juniors. Uh, they're <clears throat> pressed for capital. Um, they're full of optimists uh, that tell a story. I, I think Toronto Stock Exchange has good rules in terms of reporting. Um, but every once in a while, there's something that comes up on an exchange that catches investors and the exchange off guard. But generally, I mean, the Toronto Stock Exchange is arguably the best exchange in Canada and one of the largest exchanges for um, venture money going into the mining space. So um, I haven't approached it with that much caution. Australia does seem to be mining is a larger portion of that country's GDP. Um, and I'd have to say, I think innovation is um, greater in Australia than anywhere else in the world. Um, I've been really impressed by that. I mean, I remember back in um, at Gold Corp, I ran a contest on the internet and asked the world, we had this high grade discovery a mile below surface. And I wanted to know how large it could be. And my geologist, every time I said, how big is it going to grow? They said, we don't know. And I said, how long? And they said, we don't know how long it's going to take to find out. And I didn't like either of those answers. So um, I said, well, we're going to put all of our geological data up on the web 
and ask the world to tell us where we're going to find the next six million ounces of gold in our mine and um, offer half a million dollars in prize money. Back in 2000, we, or 99, we launched the contest, made the awards in 2000. But we found $3 billion worth of gold doing that. There were 1,500 people from 50 countries that took down a 400 megabyte file. And out of that came a couple of insights. One, it's how do you define the problem? And two, that the biggest gold mines in the world are between everybody's ears. And how do you connect? Um, but um, yeah, I, I think the mining industry uh, has a lot of room to innovate. Um, and we're going to see a lot of progress there as there's a push for more metals. And we have to be able to find it faster, define it, put it into production faster. Um, I can say, and it's maybe getting a little off topic, but in our, our copper project in McEwen Copper, I asked an architect to join our engineers and geologists and planners and say, uh, I'd like you to help us redefine mining. And this fellow is considered the Steve Jobs of the green living building space and saying, how do we change, help change the perception of mining in the eyes of investors and the general public? Because right now it's, we're viewed as an evil force in the world, but we are critical to modern civilization. So how do we get greater acceptance? And part of that is changing the appearance, the experience for the workers, um, and being much lighter on the environment. Um, so, and I think because of that, that's when I mentioned the money we raised is largely because of our approach to mining and trying to present a, a different story that hopefully one day might be one of the models that minds of the future utilize. You know, I think I think we could uh, uh, go on arguing here uh, uh, back and forth because you know what you say sounds to me like the uh, idealistic uh, scenario and and the ESG driven uh, approach to to mining. The other on the other hand, we have to acknowledge that uh, there's a good part of the world that is only cost driven and 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 is not is is, is just exploiting uh the planet uh without regards uh, to environmental uh, consequences um, I, I for think example, yeah well the mining industry has to acknowledge that in order to have social license it's going to have to sacrifice some of the profit because the pr current practices are not acceptable to the majority of the world so there's a shift and that shift they're going to there's going to be technology that comes up that helps us do a much better job of mining and dealing with the concerns and i guess i i throw it out i'll just say mining has to figure out how to be take the model uber used uh, let's call it uberize mining that there were complaints with taxis uh poor repair, you didn't know when they came, They, the drivers might have been impolite. And Uber seemed to satisfy all of that and decimate the taxi industry, at least in North America and yes. elsewhere in the world. And so can mining have an Uber moment? And I'm very optimistic it can. And we're running down that road. And do you I think that some that kind please... of consumerization coming up. Um, I mean, you talked about gold bullion, and not everybody has their own vault and has the means um, in terms of uh, financial capabilities to invest uh, directly. So, talking about tokenization, um, the likes of Bitcoin, accessibility that you could just buy a fraction of a bullion on your mobile phone via an app. Do you see something like that also uh, happening in the industry, or is regulation? Um, and then the general um, approach of the industry too conservative for that. There are some companies out there that are selling fractional interest in gold. Um, there are ETFs you can buy. Um, I'm sure someone's going, I mean, there are vending machines in the Middle East that sell gold, just like a, going up to get a, a pop or Coke or something out of a machine, you can get a bar of gold. Um, so 
uh, there is no limit to the amount of financial imagination to create ways of buying gold. And I think you'll see more and more of that. And would you also consider that for your own investments, uh, tokenization, for example? I'm old school. Um, I want to borrow gold. I want something I can hold. I think, you know, Rob, uh, we've taken your time for uh, now uh, extensively. I would really enjoy returning uh, and, and coming back to the discussion with you in due time uh, to maybe just discuss a couple of things more in depth. Again, thank you for joining us today and uh, looking forward to, to, to seeing you again soon. I appreciate your interest. Thank you Thanks very you. much. Success to all your listeners.